it's early. I'm tired. I haven't written a proper lesson plan for this, but I'm going to try to explain it uh, in ways that make sense for everyone, not just somebody who is studying physics. So if some of this is too dumbed down for you, I apologize, but I wanted to be inclusive with my explanation, and I hope that's fair, and I hope you enjoy. Um, so the argument is about whether or not... Um, diffraction will affect how far somebody can see when looking out into the horizon whether you can see and whether that proves that the earth is flat or not uh, so let's take a look at it let's try to keep as open of a mind as possible uh, without being insulting to the idiot community of flat earthers you know what they don't even deserve the word idiot uh, ridiculous conspiracists so let's take a look at a couple of key terms. Whenever, first of all, we need to discuss how light works. Number one, you don't see anything. So let's say you're here and I'm here. Um, you don't see me ever. There's a source of light and that light will bounce off of any object and it'll bounce in several different directions. So it'll bounce off me and then reflect into your eyes, your eyes send a signal to your brain, and then all of the processing of that image takes place in your brain. So your brain creates an image based on the stimulus received by uh, the sensors in your eyes, the rods and cones and whatever else is in there. Uh, biology is not my strong suit, but that's generally the basic idea. Um, so you don't see out, light is reflected back in. Uh, that's very important and key to the discussion. Light has to come from some light source, whether it be the sun or a light bulb, which is also the issue of what was wrong with my stream camera earlier is I was sitting here, uh, my television and web camera were here in front of a wall. There's my webcam uh, and my light was back behind me, which meant no light was reflecting off of the front of my face to reflect into the camera, so the screen was really bad. Any light that was reflecting off of me had to first bounce off of a blue wall, which meant a lot of the light was absorbed instead of reflected before bouncing off of my face and then bouncing back into the camera. Uh, it's a very easy fix. You just get some light set up on each side of the television, white light preferably, so it has all of the colors and reflects all of my colors, one on each side, uh, that'll reflect light off of my face and back into the camera. Uh, you need light at the front of you to have a good quality picture, which is why when you're taking a picture of a friend, um, you want them, if you're here with the camera, you want the sun behind the camera. That's crucial. So that way the light reflects off of them and then back into the camera. Um, the only issue is then they start to squint, so maybe get light at a slight angle so it doesn't destroy their eyes um, and they can smile without squinting. All right, so now light doesn't always reflect when it hits a surface. There are a couple of different things it can do. Uh, let's look at those. Number one, if you're looking at glass, it can transmit straight through. If light comes in in a straight line, even with water, it's probably gonna pass straight through. Uh, that being said, uh, when light comes at an angle, it's more likely to reflect back. And this doesn't have to be glass, this could be a person, this could be a wall, this could be you looking at your cat. So light hits the cat, reflects off, and hopefully into your eyes. Um, anytime light hits a surface that it can't be absorbed or transmitted through, it should reflect off. Now, what happens when light comes at an angle um, and gets to a denser surface? This is called refraction. 
and I want you to think about a lawnmower. Lawnmower has two wheels, right? We'll call this the right wheel, we'll call this the left wheel. So as the lawnmower is coming in at this direction, they're both spinning at the same speed because they're both on a smooth driveway. But what happens when one wheel gets to the rough surface? Um, when a wheel gets to the rough surface because of the increased friction, it's going to slow down. So imagine both of these wheels are turning independently to each other and they're not on a single axle, which hopefully they should be. Otherwise, it would make turning really, really difficult. But when these wheels come in, which one's going to hit first? Going to hit the next surface first? Well, if it travels just a couple of inches, the right wheel is going to hit the grass first, which is a much denser, much rougher material, which is going to cause the right wheel to slow down. So now the wheels were spinning at the same speed and it was moving in a straight line, but the right wheel slows down. Imagine driving in a car and your right wheel is slowing down, but your left wheel is still spinning quickly which is going to cause your car to turn. So the car, this wheel is still spinning quickly and this wheel slows down significantly, causes the car to turn, which is what happens in these pictures. The same is true for light. When light comes into a new uh, medium, let's say you have a fish tank, we have air up here and water down below. When light comes in, the right side is going to hit first, which means the left side is still going to be going faster because air is less dense than water, uh, light can travel more quickly through it. So the left side of the light wave, incoming light wave, is still traveling faster when the right side of the light wave is slowing down, which causes it to turn. So it's going to bend towards um, that perpendicular line, the normal line. Uh, and they call this the angle of incidence or something like that. Might be slightly off, but I think that's it. Um, so this is the incoming angle of incidence. This is the outgoing angle of incidence. And if you're interested, you can look up Snell's law, which gives you a ratio based on the density of the incoming material and the output material and um, the angle that it'll come in at and then it'll spit out what angle it's going to be going out at. And this is if you have just one color of light. Let's say we have blue light coming in. That blue light is going to bend towards the normal line, towards the perpendicular line, towards straight down. Um, similarly, if we went out of water so let's say light you're shining a laser pointer from the bottom of a pool and light strikes the surface water air which way is it going to bend well which wheel is going to hit first so again always imagine a wheel on the left side and the right side the left wheel is going to hit first and because it's going from water to air it's going from a less dense material or excuse me a more dense material to a less dense material this left wheel is going to speed up while the right wheel still stays slow, which is going to cause it to bend to the right or bend away from the normal line. Um, so now you should have a pretty good idea of how refraction affects the direction of light and how traveling from one material to another. But once both wheels are out of the light, once the full ray of light is out of, out of the water, now both wheels are traveling at the same speed, rotating at the same speed, which means the light will continue in a straight line until it gets to a new material of different density. Super important. By the way, all of this is refraction. And that actually happens with the Pink Floyd logo. Uh, white light comes in and because the glass prism is more dense than air the right wheel is going to hit first which means that it's going to slow down and light is going to bend downwards um, but white light 
has all of the colors of light within it. Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet, and every color in between. It's a full spectrum. It's not just those seven colors. It's the ra It's every color in between those. Um, so white light has it all. But red waves are very, very big. Huge wavelengths. Where violet waves, violet light, has very small wavelengths. By the way, wavelength is just how wide the wave is. They're all traveling at the same speed. They all travel at the speed of light, assuming they're not traveling in a different medium, because remember, the denser the medium it's traveling through, the slower it will go. Um, so all of these hit glass, um, but because red waves are so big, they're really hard to bend and bend down. They do bend down a little bit, but not as much as violet because violet waves are violet light waves are so small, it's just like whoop, they bend straight down, which is why when white light hits a new medium at an angle, violet will be ripped the hardest, red will be ripped the least, and all of these colors in between will be ripped apart into their separate colors. And then it comes out and then they continue traveling in a straight line. And also at this angle of incident, um, the left wheel is going to hit first, which means when it goes from glass to air, it's going to speed up again, which means it's going to bend down even further. This triangle shape is uh, really helpful for getting the light to come down like this, or necessary for making the light come down like this. I don't know if that makes any sense at all. It makes sense in my head. Um, so similarly, let's shine a red laser pointer from air and into water and just imagine what's going to happen as we go from a less dense material to a more dense material. The right wheel is going to slow down. The left wheel is still going to go quickly and it's going to cause it to turn this way. Uh, I should use a better angle for that. Let's have it less steep. Now it gets here, so it bent towards the uh, normal line. And now, as we come here, um, we're going from water to air, becomes less dense, and that means that the right wheel is going to hit the less dense material first, which means it's going to speed up, and it's going to continue in a straight line. By the way, uh, if you have two parallel lines for your two surfaces to enter and exit, these two lines should be parallel. So those two waves should be parallel. Coming in, bending down, and then bending back up to the exact same angle. So those angles should be uh, the same. Cool, hopefully. Uh, ask me if that doesn't make sense. <clears throat> now, you asked specifically about diffraction. I know I've gone on a wild tangent, <clears throat> but diffraction is when light goes in through a small slit and then spreads out. <clears throat> and that's because light behaves as a wave, not as a particle. Normally, if you throw, uh, roll a tennis ball through a slit, the tennis ball will continue in a straight line. Light doesn't behave that way. Light spreads out when it goes through a crack. Think about any small crack in your doorway and your whole room is filled with light. Part of that is because light reflects off of the walls and then bounces off onto the other surfaces. But really it's because when light goes through something, it spreads out and it spreads in every direction. <clears throat> The other two things that light can do when they come across a, uh, a particle or a new medium is it can be absorbed. Think about UV light hitting your skin. Your skin is the perfect uh, density to absorb that ultraviolet light, which is slightly smaller than violet light. Ultraviolet. And then when it hits a certain material, the light can also scatter. So you hit some dust in the air and the light bounces off in every direction. This is what happens in the sky. Um, and this is why the sky appears blue. Uh, it hits the air in the upper atmosphere and the light 
bounces and bounces and bounces and I could be mistaken but I think only the or the blue light is most likely to be reflected back towards our eyes I'm sketchy on that so please don't hold me accountable to that detail again that's not why I'm doing this I'm trying to hit the broad terms for you um, all right so now that we've discussed that you asked how diffraction can prove this so now we need to think about how diffraction can possibly prove uh, flat earth first of all let's assume you're really far away there's a ship out on at the edge and here's you uh, our eyes first of all are capable of seeing tremendous distance you don't think we can but we can uh, and you don't think we can because we live on a round earth which means your eyes can only see up until the curvature of earth prevents us from seeing any further but think about something miles and miles and miles and miles and miles away look at how much detail we see the moon with light reflects off of from the Sun off of the moon and into our eyes miles away so it's not that our eyes can't see a far distance, it's that we're limited based on the curvature of Earth and us not being able to see around that curvature. That's really important. But now getting back to the flat earthers, apparently from what you say, they're saying diffraction is the issue. Well again, diffraction is caused by light going through a slit and spreading in different directions. There is no slit out on the ocean. What slit are they looking through? What is being diffracted? I don't understand where this grating, where these two, where this slit is that they would think that light would do that. And even if it did, light splits and goes in every direction. And yeah, that would make the light less bright and travel less far, but one of these waves is still going to reflect off of the boat and in a straight line towards your eye. Diffraction, without seeing what other arguments they're making, makes no gosh darn sense. There's, there's no reason why that would possibly explain it, which is why I explained refraction before, because I think... Um, I think refraction would be the better thought process um, because with refraction maybe they're saying okay you're here and again the argument as you presented it to me is uh, diffraction is the reason why we can't see an infinite an object really far away if we are on a flat earth so let's assume that the surface is flat um, so you're saying that light gets refracted. Well, what causes refraction of light? Remember from before, it's because, uh, where's my lawnmower? There's my lawnmower. Refraction is caused by going through a different medium, going through a denser medium. And whether that medium is air or water or something like that. And by the way, pockets of hotter or colder air are more and less dense, um, which is why when you look across the surface of a car, a hot car, you'll see the light bend. That's because the hot air is more dense than the normal air around us. When you look through normal air, you're not going from one medium into another. You're not changing densities, which means the light will continue to travel in a straight line. But when you're looking at a hot pocket of air, on a car, let's say this is hot, then the light wave that was coming in will get bent as the density changes. So the light will reflect up or it'll reflect down and the heat gets hot and cold and hot and cold, which means the light waves get bent to the left, bent to the right, bent to the left, bent to the right. That's why things look blurry over top of a hot surface like that of a car. Excuse me. Now, coming back to wherever the heck I was, so maybe they're saying out on the ocean, there are, maybe they're, maybe they're misspeaking and they're actually talking about refraction. And this is the reason I started talking about refraction in the first place. Um, 
Let's say there's a hot pocket of air or a cold pocket of air. So light would come from the source. Let's say the sun sends a light beam, bounces off their face, and the light beam, the only light beam that could get to you, gets to this cold pocket of air, which bends the light away from you. Absolutely theoretical. Um, that would make sense. Maybe those light waves are being refracted away from you, which means when you look here, no light from this object is going to bounce towards you, which means you won't see it. Maybe light from something up here. Maybe there's a bird flying. Maybe that light, which would have gone straight down, gets refracted towards your eyes instead. And it would look like this bird is actually in a straight line, even though it's up here. It's like when you look into the water and the object is further down or further up than you think it is. When you stick your arm in, it looks like your arm is bent. That's what I'm saying. Um, so they're arguing maybe, I'm guessing, because this is the only thing that would make sense because diffraction makes no gosh darn sense at all. None, 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 none. So maybe refraction, again, without hearing their argument. I want to clarify that detail. Uh, refraction, possible. But certainly at some point, somebody would see an object incredibly far away if the Earth was flat. Uh, because we have incredibly long deserts. So certainly somebody on one side of the desert would be able to see an object on the other side of the desert because some wave would hit here, hit a hot pocket, hit here, hit a cold pocket, and then bounce into your eyes and it would look like it's in a straight line even though it's refracting up, refracting down, refracting up, refracting down, but that never happens. Which means that that isn't true. Uh, it's just bull crap. Um, <sighs> let's look at the equation before I get angry. So let's say you're standing here, and this is the equation to see how far you can see. Um, you are standing at height h, let's say you're six feet tall. And based on that height, if you look as far as you can in a straight line, eventually you will see the horizon line, as far as you can see before the Earth disappears and you're looking into space space. Um, so even though you, th the only thing that affects how far you can see is how tall you are. So let's say you stand on a tower instead. Well now, when you look straight ahead, now you can see over to here before you do it, or before, before you can't see any further. Um, and that equation is distance is equal to the square root of 2rh, where r is the curvature or radius of Earth. That's not going to change. The 2 isn't going to change. The only thing that affects the distance that you can see before things disappear over the horizon is your height. So if you're in a watchtower, you can see way further, which is the same reason why, they, why boats have crow's nests. The higher you are, the farther you can see before things disappear over the horizon. Um, and because it's in the square root, and this is going to get just a touch mathematical for one second, that if you quadruple how high you are, that four times is going to get square rooted, and you're only going to be able to see twice as far. If you're nine times as high, again, it's going to get square rooted, you're only going to be able to see three times as far. So you're definitely losing things, or you're, it's not as effective uh, as you go higher and higher and higher. You'll still be able to see farther and farther, but to less and less of an impactful manner. So if you go 10 feet higher, let's say you start at 10 feet, and then you go 10 feet higher, uh, you've doubled how far you can go, so you're gonna be able to see 1.4 times as far. Uh, let's say you go another 10 feet. Well, now you've only increased one and a half times, uh, which means the square root of one and a half, which is really, really small, root 1.5. 
you're only going to be able to see 1.2 times. So every time you go up another 10 feet, you don't keep seeing 1.4 times as far. You just see a little bit farther, a little bit less far, a little bit less farther uh, until effectively it does nothing. <sighs> Which again brings me back to the original idea. All of this is bull crap. Um, there are plenty of things to be... What are the word for those people? Be a conspiracist about. There's a lot of things that you should not be trusting. Um, are we being tracked? Are they looking at the data on our devices? Are they selling the data on our devices? Are they... Are they manipulating us with the media to get us to do things and get distracted so that they can go and do other things? There's plenty of reasonable conspiracies. But when your conspiracy requires you to pretend that a scientific principle does not exist, now you're just playing games and you're not actually furthering anything for the betterment of people. So when you're choosing your conspiracies, don't choose one that breaks science or ignores science because that's such a mistake. Uh, I hope you enjoyed. If you have any questions, let me know. Thanks.